Hey, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to review this um, another Amazon turntable. The brand name is Voxon. Um, yeah, this is one of the many brands when you go on Amazon and search for it and just hundreds of options top pops up for the turntable. So the reason I have this one because um, I was looking for a gift under $200 to someone that's never listen records and yeah it had to be some intro level turntable but still some uh decent features so it can at least play decent quality so this uh here's the features i was mostly looking for it should come with speakers so nothing additional you need to set up or anything just open box set it up and you have everything to play the records it should play all three speeds 33 45 78 common speeds um style and the style well maybe you know matching a furniture or something because there are a lot of other turntables in this price range with similar features and really only difference is the style they put into it uh price under 200 dollar and should be simple nothing complicated decent cartridge needle again so get a decent sound quality and cannot be costly because it has a bad reputation but we'll get to that later uh, at the end of this video, we'll actually look some alternatives to this turntable also. So yeah, uh, now when I looked, basically my choice came down to this Waxon turntable because it ticked all the boxes. In addition, it has a counterweight, that's good, because usually those turntables don't have a counterweight and it has a Bluetooth integration. That's quite common nowadays, but we'll look how this one is set up. When I looked at the brand, they were this brand, there's only a couple more turntables. And yeah, nothing else I could find in, about this brand. That's why it's like probably one of those temporary Amazon brands, as I call them. I don't know. When I tried to look a website, this is the only website I got. And frankly, it's some earbuds. I don't know. So yeah, we'll see. I'm a little skeptical, but I'm taking this one for the team. Let's open this up. Let's unpack it, let's set it up, let's listen some samples, look what features it has. Okay, let's see what's here. Manual. Okay, that's a counterweight, I guess. It looks like everything is... Okay. Okay, we got the speakers. Yeah, looking good, heavy enough. Okay, this is the turntable itself, kind of, and the platter. Let's get the platter out. Yeah, decent, decent platter, heavy enough, and. Okay, and a pops. So just out of curiosity, we opened the phone really quick um, to see what kind of drivers inside. As we can see, there's a dedicated high frequency, low frequency, and a passive radiator. So this is supposed to help with the low frequency. Let's see. Looks like there's the, all the parts. Let's try to put them together, see what can I do. I've never done this, honestly. So yeah, okay. I think belt is here. So yeah, I want to get the belt out somehow. And let me see if you see this, but uh, I'm gonna assume it's somehow. Yeah, let's try that. And yeah, I guess something like that. No? It's turning. <laughs> I think it's working. That's probably the biggest setup we need. Next, we need to connect the speakers, obviously. So yeah, it looks like this is a mini 8 millimeter connector. Okay, last, I guess, the power supply goes in. And yeah, it's kind of light. Good audio files not watching this video. And yeah, kind of important, the counterweight. And let's put it back. I have little concerns about counterweight. So yeah. And okay, yeah, that's that's little... Okay, we'll, we'll try to figure this out. Before we move further, I have a little concern about this counterweight because uh, it's really hard to move, especially back. Like once you move forward, it goes pretty good, but to move back, uh, yeah, it's, it's tricky. And 
Yeah, we'll see. It's kind of complicated. Uh, another thing, there's no marking, nothing like, uh, you can't really say how many grams you said in anything. So there are a couple of ways this needs to be said. Either, well, eyeball it or, yeah, we need a special device to check the tracking force for this particular um, uh, needle that it comes with. Here's the way we finally put it together. So just let's go over really quick what it has. So we have the volume also on off switch and uh, we have a pitch controller panel. We'll see how that works and a s uh, switch for the speed 33, 45 and 78. And there's an adapter for 45 records. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And I'm not sure how it activates. Okay, yeah, it activates when you move the arm. So it's automatic. You don't have a way to manually turn it on and off. We need to set up that counterweight somehow, at least approximately. Uh, there's no marking on it. We don't know. And frankly, I've, I, I can only think, only way I can think using this kind of a scaler. So it's a special scaler. You can buy additional, I don't know, $10, $15. Um, I'm not sure is there other way to set this up. Otherwise, try to eyeball it. And basically the way we need to do it and take this and put the needle on the scaler in the middle and see how many grams is. It's a very quick way to set this up. And yeah, let's, ah, uh, yeah the automatic thing never mind so we need to take the power off looks like okay full that means over five gram at least that's not good because this needle is uh this uh, needle requires two and a half three and a half gram uh to properly run that's its tracking force so well i guess let's try ah oh, that's okay that i don't know what happened but it went all the way back let's try this way 2.78. Well, that's that's okay. That's not bad. Uh, well, that's all the way I can go. Okay, I guess we'll stick with this 2.78 gram. That's within the spec of this needle. Looks like finally I put it together and um, yeah, let's play some records. That's the only way we can see. There's not much features here. There's a Bluetooth. We can send the signal here. We'll try that later. And there's no RCA, no line outputs. Looks like there's only speaker output. Um, I don't know. That's but really the big issue that I'm having this counterweight because I had to basically push all the way back to get it into the right tracking force for this needle. Yeah, it's a little gimmicky. There's no markings, nothing. Again, forget about like trying to experiment with it, put it different needles and probably just stick with the same one once you set it up. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's just play some music. There is an easy way to really record the sound from a speaker and it's not a line line output, obviously. Um, we're gonna try our best. We're gonna use this zoom recorder and just stick it in front of the speakers and record it so you can make some judgment out of it. Again, this is an exact science, a lot of variables, but at least they'll give you some idea. Look, your love has drawn me from my hands, from my hands. Okay, I'm, we're just going to do the same couple records just to test it and we'll move the microphone further, seven feet. Um, let's see how that sounds. The volume, I'm almost all the way up. So the way this record stops, uh, basically when this tone arm goes all the way and somewhere here and it's supposed to stop and then it plays those charm chimes. Yeah. 
Let's try, see. Okay, that worked. All right, okay, let's play some 45 RPM records. Um, so switch the speed. Here's the adapter. And here's some records. Okay, here's the problem right there. When I played this 45, basically, as you can see, the song is not finished yet, but it first muted the audio and then it stopped the platter. Yeah, that's not good. So if you're playing 45s, there's a good chance that you may not hear the song all the way. Let's play some old 78 RPM records and see how that's gonna work. Okay. So here's the thing, I can actually hear the noise from the motor. Well, looks like it doesn't like 78s too much too, because it stops right before the actual programming stops. And that's a good another 30 seconds or something probably of music. And it mutes the sound apparently, it has some mechanism inside, you can't even just try by hand. Um, yeah, that's not really good. Okay, let's have some fun. So let's play 70 RPMs, but not the 10 inch, but 12 inch. So usually there's some classical music back in the days that were recorded on a 12 inch disc, but it's still 78 RPM. And they're pretty heavy. So see how that's how the player gonna handle those. Okay, this one played all the way, but I was about to stop, so no guarantee that it will play them all the way. Let's try the Bluetooth really quick. I'm just play something. I'm not even gonna look at the quality. So basically, by default, when you turn the unit on, it's a Bluetooth. And yeah, just a pair of new device, and yeah, it shows up. Again, nothing depends on the phone system you're using. Locks and turntables, so let's try to pair, see what we hear. Uh, pair. Okay, it wants access to my contacts and call history. Uh, no. So what that was, it didn't work. Hold on, let's try again. Allow access. Well, it's a check mark, so I can just pair without putting a check mark in my case. Okay. Eh? Something came up. Let's try to play some non-copyright music. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm randomly selecting one. Okay, yeah, Bluetooth is working fine. I went upstairs, kind of walk around. Yeah, it looks okay. Okay, well, we listen some samples, we try different formats, and here's my kind of conclusion about this turntable and the sound. Well, we recorded most of the sound almost all the way up, a little bit less, just to see how much distortions we get, how much it can handle the sound, and there aren't that much low frequency as I expected first, because uh, 
with this passive radiator, you would think there'll be more lows, but no. Um, it did okay. It was a decent clean sound. It's, it's, I guess it's okay if you're playing quietly in a living room somewhere. Definitely don't want to rock the house with this. It's just not gonna work. Uh, uh, another reason, uh, I think, I mean, if you look at the power supply, it's a really lightweight power supply. Probably not much power going to the amplifier, and I'm not sure what kind of amplifier they use. Preamplifier. So, yeah, it's okay. It sounds okay but not really good. You can listen to some records. Um, needle, fine. It's an Audio-Technica needle, so you shouldn't be worried about damaging your records. The counterweight, yeah, this is a gimmick. This this is just, yeah, not a real one. But I was able to set proper weight, tracking force, kind of. Um, now the problem really big I have, the speeds. 33 RPM records, they played okay. Uh, they played at least a couple of them I tried all the way, but unfortunately when I switched to 45 RPM records, um, yeah, it would just cut close to the end of the track. And it's weird, It's um, first it mutes the sound, then it plays the chime. It could be that it's trying to by default switch back to the Bluetooth mode. 78 RPM records, about the same issue. They would probably sometimes, sometimes cut like a whole like 20-30 seconds of the music at the end, so not really practical to play those records, but 33 RPM looks like it did a decent job. So, um, I, I searched the Amazon a little bit more, and uh, there are a couple more turntables that I found in this price range I think it's really interesting to look into. One is Audio-Technica ATLP60. This is actually not a bad turntable, and around $200 you can get a set with the speakers. I, I don't know, I didn't try this, but Audio-Technica is a trusted uh, brand. And honestly, there is another turntable similar to this one, Crossley C62. I know it's Crossley, but this particular turntable, besides it has an um, output for the speakers, it has line output, so you can connect to your existing system uh, or just put an amplifier. And I don't know, it doesn't look like a bad turntable. It actually looks okay. So there's a couple options, uh, if I find some, check the description below, uh, I'll add all the links I have, uh, as per this one. Yeah, so, uh, took some while to do this review, I even grew some beard. But in this last section where we're doing all this example, we spent a couple hours uh, listening to this, and yeah, the last time, last one when I was switching to Bluetooth, uh, yeah, it started banging to my head really bad, this sound. I I kind of hate it. It sounds pretty bad, actually. And those who stayed all this long to watch this video, I guess this is your reward. Yeah, this is absolutely overpriced piece of, piece of equipment, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't pay this money, they're asking. Maybe $100, maybe to give it to kids to play with it so they can break it or whatever they want to do with it. Um, but yeah, this, this isn't the product I will, I can stand behind.